Hey guys, in this video we look at transverse wave as well as longitudinal waves. We're going to look at the difference and we're going to study the characteristics such as the amplitude, the frequency, the period and the wavelength. And at the end of the video, I will discuss the wave equation. So stay tuned. First, let's take a look at transverse waves. When we think about waves, this is probably the image that comes to mind. This is a very familiar picture of waves. These type of waves are actually known as transverse waves. Imagine that these are the water particles on the surface of a pool. And imagine that you cause a disturbance on the left side. You can drop something into the pool on the left side and you will see that there will be a ripple spreading out from the point where you drop the object into the pool. Let's see what is happening to the particles of water on the surface of the pool. Now this is where the wave begins. The wave is traveling from left to right in this direction. Notice the movement of the red particle. So the red particle, as the wave passes through, first it goes up and up again, and then it follows the wave. It goes down and down back. So this position here is the starting position of the particle, and this is known as the equilibrium position. So the particle now has gone up and come back down, and now as the wave continues to flow, the particle goes down, down, and then it starts to go up again, and back to the same position. So at this point, we have seen the particle move upwards until a maximum point, go back to the equilibrium position, go down again to another maximum point, and then go back to equilibrium. At this stage, look at the shape of the wave. So at this point, the particle is said to have made one complete oscillation. It's gone up, come down, gone down and come up. So this is one full oscillation. As the wave continues to flow, the particle will still move up and down, up and down, up and down, continue to go up and down. So will all the other particles. One important point to note here is that the particle does not move left or right. When the wave passes through the particle, the particle only moves up and down. There is only vertical displacement. There is no horizontal displacement. So if we had an object that is floating on the water, the wave would not carry the object further away. The object would only move up and down. When we're talking about transverse waves, we say that this is the direction of movement of the wave. We call it the direction of propagation of the wave and this is the direction of motion of the particle. For transverse waves, the direction of propagation of waves is perpendicular to the direction of motion of particles as we can see here. You can see the angle formed between the two directions is 90 degrees and therefore it is perpendicular. <laughs> There are two types of graphs that are generally drawn. First is the displacement distance graph. The displacement represents the vertical displacement of the particle from its equilibrium position. And the particle is moving up, equilibrium, down and back to equilibrium again. The distance represents the distance of the propagation of the wave. How far is the wave going away from where it began? There are a few terms associated with this graph. First is the crest. The crest is the highest point on the graph. So we have three crests here. These are called crests. And then the lowest point is called the trough. There are two troughs in this graph. The amplitude is the furthest point away from the equilibrium position. When we look at the vertical displacement of the particle from its equilibrium position, we can immediately tell that this is the maximum displacement from the equilibrium position. And so is this. These lengths of maximum displacement is what we call the amplitude. So this is an amplitude. This is also an amplitude. Now, Although this is a negative displacement, amplitude is a scalar quantity, so we ignore the negative. Amplitude is defined as the maximum displacement of a particle from its equilibrium position, from this line. Points in phase are points that are at exactly the same phase in the motion of the wave. All these points are in phase because they are all exactly at the same point of a wave. All of them are at the maximum point of a wave, so they are in phase. Same goes to these three points. These three points are in phase because when we look at one wave, they are all at exactly the same position. These are points in phase. There are three points in phase that we can identify very easily. That is the points on the crest, the points at the equilibrium position, but we need to be careful because this point and this point are not in phase. 
At this point, the particle is going to move downwards. But at this point, the particle is going to move upwards. So they are not points in phase. So when we look at the equilibrium position, we have to skip one for them to be in phase. These three points are in phase. And the third one is, of course, at the troughs. These points are in phase as well. When we have points in phase and we take the distance between the two consecutive points in phase, then we have measured the wavelength. As the name suggests, the wavelength is the length of one wave. And the length of one wave is the distance between any two consecutive points that are in phase. This length, this length, all these lengths represent the wavelength. The symbol for wavelength is lambda. These are wavelengths as well. So the wavelength is defined as the distance between two consecutive points in phase. The second type of graph for transverse wave is the displacement time graph. Instead of displacement distance, this time we have displacement time. So displacement has the same meaning for both graphs, but this time we are recording it against time. So this time, when we take two points in phase, we are actually measuring the time taken for one complete oscillation. And this is known as the period. The period is represented by capital T. Period is defined as the time taken for one complete oscillation of a particle. And when the x-axis is time, all these represent the period. Then we have frequency. Frequency is defined as the number of complete oscillations of a particle in one second. How many oscillations are completed in one second? That is the frequency. And the frequency can be represented by the reciprocal of the period, one over period. When the period is in seconds, the unit for frequency is per second or hertz, hz. Longitudinal waves do not form that familiar pattern of waves. Instead, they look like this. An example of longitudinal wave is sound waves. Let's see what happens when a longitudinal wave passes through particles. Again, we have an arrangement of particles. Let's say these are particles of air. When the sound wave passes through the particles, instead of moving up and down, the particles move left and right. The direction of propagation of the waves and the direction of the motion of the particles are parallel. So for a longitudinal wave, direction of propagation of wave is parallel to the direction of motion of particles. Longitudinal waves do not have crest and trough. However, they have compression and rarefactions. Let's look at the picture here. You can see that there are certain regions where the lines are very close together. They seem to be compressed. And then there are certain regions where the lines are very far apart. And these are alternate. So you see very close together, far apart. Very close together and far apart. So the regions where the lines are compressed is known as compression. So these are the compressions of the wave. And then in between them, we have the rare factions. This is opposed to crests and troughs. Longitudinal waves also have points that are in phase. When we look at the pattern of the wave, we can start off with the center. So all these points are in phase. And then it would follow that if we move two lines to the right, then two lines to the right, this would be in phase as well. We can also take the center of the rare faction. So these are all points that are in phase. And when we measure the distance between the points that are in phase, once again, we get the wavelength. The wave equation begins with the equation for speed. Speed is the rate of change of distance or distance per unit time. When we get the speed of the wave, we have to measure the distance traveled by the wave over the time taken for the wave to travel that specific distance. So here we choose the length of one wave as the distance traveled by the wave because the time taken for one complete oscillation is the period. So we get the speed of the wave will be equals to the wavelength divided by the period, the time taken for one complete oscillation for that wave to occur. We use the symbols to represent them. V is equals to lambda divided by T and this can be written as 1 over T multiplied by lambda. The reason we do 1 over t is because 1 over t is equals to frequency. When we replace it with frequency, 
This is the wave equation. V is equals to f lambda. The speed of a wave is equals to the frequency of the wave multiplied by its wavelength. That's it for this video guys. I hope you've learned something. If you have, please do help support me by hitting that like button. It really does help to tell YouTube that you've enjoyed the video. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please do subscribe. I'll be producing at least one video a week. I'll see you in the next video.